faith. Faith means conviction of truth, trust and believing in the Lord Almighty. This is said by our dear pastor, Christopher Peter K. A good Sunday morning to you. I'm sitting in for our regular hostess, Miss Samantha Christopher. Welcome to this edition of Khushi Ki Khabar. In today's episode of Khushi Ki Khabar, Pastor Christopher Peter K of Word of God Church and Prayer Center will educate us on fear and faith. Let's join him. Welcome to this another episode of Khushi Ki Khabar and uh, we still continue to talk about faith and this will be the last in this series of faith uh, because uh, from the month of June I will be teaching you on divine healing and before I can go on to divine healing we have to say what faith says to see what is divine healing. So let's just continue with our study and we remember always Abraham is the father of nations and his father of all the believers. I have told you enough about Abraham. Let's go continue to uh, the journey of faith. The Bible has a chapter in, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 which is the chapter of faith. It calls the hall of faith. Everyone who has faith and who has done tremendous things by faith is mentioned there but not all of them are mentioned there. There are other people who have and the, what kind of faith we have to have. The Bible talks about the Lord Jesus says, you must have a seed, like a mustard seed faith, a small faith. It doesn't require you to have a big faith. Let's see. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verse 21, very easy to remember. Matthew 21, 21. Even if you don't remember anything, just remember 21, 21. And that's it. 21, 21. And then Matthew. If you have a friend Matthew, just remember him. So it says, I tell you the truth, if you have faith and do not doubt, so now Jesus is saying how faith works. If you have faith and do not doubt, not only you can do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. Can you believe this? If you know history, and there's a guy who is a historian and he writes this and it happened in the country of Saudi Arabia. There was a mountain which was asked by the king and the king says to the Christians, in your Bible it is written when you pray the mountain has to be removed. And if you pray and this mountain is not to be removed, it, it will not go away, all of the Christians will be killed. So the Christian gathered and they were saying how we can do it. There was a cobbler, he was not a pastor, he was a cobbler, he was mending the shoes in that city. He went to the bishop of the city. And that bishop announced a fast and they prayed. And it's written in history, I'm not saying anything which has no authentication. It's on Google, it's in history, you can read it. If you don't find, send me an email. Send me an email at kushikikhabar at gmail.com. I will send you the link if you want to know. If you don't want to know, it's okay. But it happened. No one can deny it. So they prayed and that mountain and after the prayer was tilted, it moved from its place and the king of that country believed. So Jesus said, if you pray and have no doubt, the mountains will go. Now this mountain may not be a physical mountain in your life. Your mountain may be your sickness. Your mountain may be your finances. A mountain means something which don't allow you to see to the other side or something which is very high. An obstacle, a hindrance. 
This mountain may be a mountain of curse on your family and you need blessings. I am sitting here to saying to you, beyond the mountain, there is something special for you. And if you pray, God remove this mountain of sickness, this mountain of financial crisis, this mountain of family problems, this mountain of uh, uh, the circumstances, my mortgage, whatever you have, God will remove that mountain to bless you. So Jesus said, when Jesus was walking on the water, Peter was in the boat and Peter saw, in the beginning they saw, thought, oh man, this is a ghost man walking on the water, see? And then they said, no, 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 this is Jesus, Jesus. Peter said, Jesus, is this you? Yes, Peter, I am Jesus. Okay, sir. Can I walk with on the water as you are walking? No, no, Peter, you cannot walk on the water. I am son of the living God. Only I am authorized to do that. You are Peter. He didn't say that. Jesus said, oh yes, why not? Whatever is mine is yours. Come. Peter started walking on the water. The only human being who walked on the water is Peter. And this was not a swimming pool where I have seen videos on YouTube, people walking on water in the swimming pool. This was a real water, man. And there was storm there. There were waves. What happened? Peter was walking. He was seeing Jesus. He was walking, walking, walking. Then he says, he just turned his neck and he saw the waves. Oh, oh my gosh. This is a storm and the waves are going to kill me. And what he said? When his eyes went towards other things, eyes away from Jesus, he was going to, to be drawn. Jesus stretched his hand caught Peter and said, Peter, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? When you were not doubting, doubting, you were walking on the water. Now you are doubting, that's why you are drowning. But I am here to save you. He is saying the same thing to you. Then, there was a woman. Her, her daughter was sick. There was an evil spirit which was tormenting her daughter. This woman, woman was from Lebanon, from Sur in Urdu from Phoenix, Phoenix, that's a Lebanon. So she came to Jesus, 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 yes, I have a daughter who is afflicted, can you heal my daughter? Jesus said, no. Jesus was tempting, testing her faith as he tested the faith of Abraham. The daughter said, this woman said, my daughter is sick, can you heal him? He said, no. Why not? Because you are not a Jewish lady. You are not from Israel. You don't have faith. Jesus knew she had faith, but he wanted her to confess. And when she confessed, Jesus said to this lady, your faith has healed your daughter. Woman, you have a great faith. Your request is granted. Do you have that faith? That God says, son, daughter, you have a great faith. Your request is granted. You are healed. And Bible says in Matthew 15, 28, her daughter was healed immediately at the same time. Because there was no doubt in her faith. Jesus said, I have never seen a faith like this in my own people in Israel. Matthew 9, 2. A paralytic guy was brought to Jesus. Jesus saw their faith. Now this guy was a paralyzed guy. He was paralyzed. He don't have faith. But the people who brought him to Jesus, they had faith that if they will take this brother or this man, their father may be, to Jesus, Jesus will heal them. You might have some conditions in your life. If you have faith, bring those conditions to Jesus, he will heal them. 
So what happened? They brought him to Jesus. And Jesus said to the paralytic guy, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. And immediately he started walking. You know how they brought in this guy? There was no place. There was a crowd around. They opened the roof. You know, it's roof in, in our countries, in the Middle East. It's different from roof which we have here. They cut the roof. Why? Because the people who brought this guy, they had faith that when this man will go to Jesus, Jesus will heal them, heal this guy. And it happened. There was an, a, a man who was blind. He went to Jesus. Jesus healed him according to his faith. So what is faith? Faith means no doubt. If you have doubt, God cannot do anything for you. What are the enemies of faith? I told you one enemy is fear. The second is doubt. The third is defeat. Number four is falling down. Number five is regret. And number six is death. And six is the number of men. These are the enemies of faith. You have fear. Oh, what's going to happen? You have doubts. Maybe God will do it. Maybe not. You have defeat. Oh, I have done this last time. Nothing happened. That's defeat. Every day defeat comes at your heart and knocks at your door. Hey, Hi, mister. Hi, miss. I'm defeat. I'm here. Can you come? Let me in. And you open the door of defeat. It comes in. And then you're defeated again because you allow defeat to come in, not faith. If faith, if you allow faith to come into your heart, you will have victory. You will have peace, joy, love, breakthroughs, miracles, signs, wonders, finances, restoration. Healing, reconciliations. Then you open the door of regret. Oh, I regret why I married this man. Oh, I regret why I was born into this Desi family. Oh, I regret why I came to this country. Oh, I regret why I married this woman. Oh, I regret why I married to, the, uh, uh, to this person who is not from the same religion. And you have regrets and you allow regrets to come in. You stop faith to come in. Then, sometimes you allow death. I've seen people, they allow death. Death don't want to come, but they allow death to come in. Why? That's what they're saying. My father died with cancer, and I will also die with cancer. My father died with heart attack. I'm also going to die with heart attack. Well, I have a word for you. How dumb you are. You are asking the death for yourself. Rather to say that my father, this is what I say. Because I have faith. I say my father had diabetic, but I will never had diabetic in my life. And I don't have it. I am 46 years old now. I said my father had a heart attack. But I will never have a heart attack, will have a heart attack in my life, and I will never have it. I say my father had, or my, someone in my family had a high blood pressure, but I will never have it. But what happened? Guess what? I had blood pressure till three months ago. Then I came to the door of faith. One day, I was going to my work. And I started praying, God, you said when you have faith, no sickness will come into your life. And from that day, three months now, I don't have high blood pressure in my life. I prayed. And I believe the same for you. There was a time when I died, I told you many times. There was a time I was a paralytic from one side. I didn't give up. I have faith. Faith conquers. There was a time I didn't have money. I didn't have money to pay for this station. But by faith, I got my money. It's by faith. I got my job. At the last day, last hour, I got my job. A better job. Within two months, another better job. 
in the same place. Why? Because of faith. Faith works. Don't call death in your life. Don't call defeat. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, and when I say 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, I want you to read it with me, please. I'm not teaching you, I'm sharing with you so we can read together, both of you and me, all of us together reading this word. You may say, I don't have Bible. You don't have to have Bible. Open your Android, iPhone or tablet. The Bible is there. A, just do a Google 2 Corinthians 5, 7 in your language. Your language may be Hindi, Punjabi, Gujarati, Arabic. If you are Arabic, uh, I know Arabic, but I, I'm not speaking it now. But Hal Aya Mawjood, Phil Web, Mawjood Phil Google. Ektab Laya, I am Majud, a Kulshi Majud, an internet. Subkush internet pe hai, ab dek sakte. Second Corinthians 5 7, it says, We live by faith, not by sight. What it means? It means faith will keep you alive. I have a report from the doctor. It says, You're going to die in three days. I have a report from the Bible, you will live by faith. If I believe the doctors, the doctors are right. My body condition says I will die and doctors are never wrong. But here we are having God who has created this doctor. The doctor has limited, limited knowledge, but God has limitless knowledge. The genes which are not discovered still by science, and God knows them before the foundation of the world. So I live by faith, not by sight, not by what I see, not by my bank account, not by my employer, not by the economy. I live by faith. I got my car, SUV, by faith. I got my home by faith. I'm going to get a better home now by faith. I'm going to get more promotions on my job by faith. I'm going to receive more healing in my body by faith. I'm going to be prospering in my life by faith because the Bible says we live by faith, not by sight. Whatever you see today is a mountain in front of you, but beyond this mountain, there's a blessing. You don't know the blessings which are beyond the mountain. Just go. Command the mountain to be removed. Bible says the mountain will be removed. 1 Peter 1.21 Through him who believed in God, who raised Jesus Christ from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope is in God. My faith and hope is in God, not in man, not in my degrees. Not in my certifications, not in my knowledge, not in my theology, not in my body, not in my spouse, not in my children, not in my uh, friends. My faith is in God because everyone will, you know, be unfaithful to you, but God will never be unfaithful to you. Everyone will leave you. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you. Let's pray. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, you have given us authority. That whatever we will bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we will open on earth will be open in heaven right now according to death authority in Matthew chapter 18 verse 18, Luke 10, 19. Father God, I command every situation in the life of these people who are watching this program to be over. Oh Lord, I pray that the finances will come, the blessings will come, the healing will come in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, these people will prosper. Oh, Lord, Master God, their soul will prosper. They will come to know you as the living God. They will live by faith, not by sight, oh, Lord. Lord, I pray that every mountain they are facing right now will be removed in the name which is above all other names, the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that every sickness will go out of the body right now. Those who are in the hospitals will be coming home, oh, Master God. Those who are having financial problems and crisis will be restored. Oh, every bankruptcy 
debts will be over, Master God. Every debt will be over right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever the economy says, we don't go by sight. Lord, I pray that you will open supernatural sources for this country. Bless this country. Bless the president. Bless every person who is in the authority. Oh Lord, I pray your protection over America. According to your word in Psalm 91, O oh Master God, your angels will be guarding this country, O oh Master God. I pray, O oh Master God, no weapon which is formed against this country will prosper. According to Isaiah 54, verse 17, Lord, I pray, O oh Master God, that you bless America, bless the people, every, co every community in this country, every color, every race, every religion, O oh Master God. I pray your protection upon every re religious place, O oh Master God. Bless every religious leader in this country. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Once again, I'm very thankful to you for watching this episode. If you need prayer, just shoot me an email or call me. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. और इसी के साथ साथ खुशी की खबर यहीं पर समाप्त हो रहा है 
Hope you got the valuable advice of Fair and Faith from Pastor Sahab today. यदि आपको प्रेयर सर्विस की जरूरत है तो हमारे पास्टर क्रिस्टोफर पीटर के आपकी खिदमत में हमेशा हाजिर है अगले हफ्ते आप सभी को खुशी की खबर में मिलेंगे तो आप भी हमें मिलना ना भूलिएगा तब तक के लिए आप ठीक रहिएगा और प्यार से खुदा हाफिज Now